All right, guys. So I've got Idris on the show. And, you know, one thing I love is I love meeting great people who are real, who are, you know, want to get out there. They want to share their personal stories with a big following like mine's. I think you all know that I'm creeping onto 31,000 followers now. And one great guy that I've got on board, you know, Idris, you know, he said to me, man, I want real, I want to share my real story about, you know, the systematic shift of COVID, what's going on with AI, um, you know, people coming back into the workforce because I think, you know, we're, we're all in lockdown and, you know, there's probably thousands of people who are going to watch this video. I, I mean, sometimes my videos just go sky high. So I think there's going to be a lot of people nodding their heads and saying, yeah, you know what, this is an interview that we've got to watch, we've got to tune into. So we're going to cover quite a lot, especially with the lockdown and everything. And I do wish, you know, he's got years and years of experience. You know, he's, it really means something to him to share his voice out. So do follow him. You know, this is something that we're going to talk about over time. And uh, you'll check him out throughout this interview. And towards the end, we'll leave a link to his bio. So Idris, it's great to have you. Yeah, man. Great to see you too, Nas. And I'm very excited to be here. All right. So, you know, the whole, the whole topic, right? Before we go into it, tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, tell me a little about who you are, you know, what you're doing. Yeah, so uh, I'm in my work. I am the territory manager for the Well Creative Consultants. So we are a talent matchmaker for the creative industries, creative fields uh, in communications, marketing, uh, and IT. Um, so yeah, so what we do is we, uh, I go out and I source opportunities. Uh, we have a network of, you know, upwards of a thousand professional, senior, elite, and intermediate level uh, specialists and practitioners in the fields. And, uh, and we connect them. We connect these people to those opportunities. We're kind of like a human version of a platform, right? So, right. you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an interface, right? And I'm interface. You're like the image, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, so it's, a bit, it's a bit different than, say, you know, marketplaces where you go and you choose people. It's a little bit different. And um, I come from digital. I'm a content strategist by trade, copywriter. Um, so I, you know, I love story. I, I, I immediately connected with, with your stuff as soon as I, you know, as soon as I saw you, I was just like, wow, okay, this is, this is what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, I'm, I'm so, I'm just so enamored and captivated by how people tell stories, where they choose to do it, the channels they do it and, and how, what kind of impacts they have on people. Um, and so that's always been a part of my life so ever since I was very, very young. Uh, yeah. I'm multiracial, multicultural, multireligious. Uh, so like, you know, stories, stories matter. Oh, stories shine, count. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you, and you're talking about, you know, some personal things like, you know, COVID that really matters to you about what's going on in the workforce. And, you know, there's a lot of guys that are going to be tuning in and it's great that we've actually got someone who's a community builder. Would you agree? Are you sort of a, a community guy? It's, it seems you kind of tick those boxes sort of thing. Yeah. It, I mean, it's a priority piece, but it's also, you know, the old adage that you are who you know, you know, what, what, what you impact and what you can reach for is what you can achieve, right? So, you know, to sound completely cliche and, you know, I'm in my 40s, so like sadly cliches come true <laughs> as you get older. <laughs> but, you know, the thing and is... And being real, right? Being real, it's all about that as well, right? It's the whole it's thing. Key. Yeah, it's totally key. And uh, especially in different, you know, channels where you can't hide, you know, you, you have to be yourself. Right. So it, it's really important. Um, but now, you know, with all of the change that has happened with, you know, with, with, especially with pandemic, people did not, we didn't see this coming then. Like we, we just, we just did. And I think we're going to knuckle down to these questions now. So we've got a jam packed interview for, for all my followers here. Um, first things first, man, you hit it on the nutshell, you, you know, this pandemic, this, this furlough, What's your take on it? I mean, that's my first question to you. What's the concern happening now in the workforce? There's a lot. Um, so, you know, one of the things that, and this is a, at the risk of sounding a little controversial, um, because I'm, I'm on the front lines of this and I'm exposed to a, a lot of different sort of trends and, and plays as they happen. Um, pandemic caught everyone by surprise, but to me, pandemic isn't necessarily a a a, a, a fundamental shift. It's right. more, um, 
it's more an accelerant of what already was happening, right? right? So all the underlying baseline trends of, you know, workforce and, and technology and all the things that were kind of coming into the fray, once pandemic hit, that was the point of striking where that accelerant was added to the solution and it just created a huge fire everywhere. And at the same time that that was happening, everyone was being pulled out of the workforce in the ways that they knew. So there was a discomfort that was already there, an effect on psychology and mental health, a forced relocation and forced remote work on top of the actual, you know, economic and medical kind of, you know, conditions that were changing week to week. So people weren't ready for it. It hit harder than ever. And as a society, we were doing, we were doing a lot of the right things, but that, you know, has an impact on the workforce. Yeah. And so, you know, before, before all of that took place, we still had a gig economy. We still had the fourth industrial revolution taking shape over the last four to five years. Um, we had, you know, AI and automation that have been ramping up over the last 10 years, um, specifically the last five, it's been crazy. Um, and then we had inequality and, and economic issues and precarity in people's workplaces, watching whole manufacturing streams being moved from one location to another. Um, and that's being, you know, quickened. The uh, yeah. pandemic has made that even faster. And I think it's accelerated things, right? People are becoming more and more, like, I would say, aware of what's going on. Um, and, you, you, you know, you mentioned the fourth industrial revolution, which is kind of like taking a grip in all of this. You know, my, my, a serious question I have to you is, how are people going to cope being at home now? I mean, that's, a, like, that's the most serious thing. Where are, you, where are you seeing this and where are you taking it? Because there's a lot of people who are at home they're, they're, they're worried. Uh, what, what advice would you give these guys, you know, post pandemic? Well, you know, oddly enough at the, at, at the well, we're all remote and we've been remote. So we've been doing this now for about six years right. and uh, we've retained a remote sort of setting and setup. Um, but, you know, between 15 and 40% of the workforces globally have been allowing some ver version of uh, remote work. Right. So, you know, there, there were opportunities for people to kind of get a taste for it and, and as employers, owners, or as employees, but it was never kind of, you know, forced on everyone, right? So that kind of aspect of it was something that people weren't ready for. And, you know, when, when work-life balance suddenly just is no longer real and, you know, I mean, work-life balance, I had a problem with anyway as a concept, but, you know, <laughs> now work and life are literally in the same space right and the the mental taxation on that the the idea that you know you can't watch cnn or msnbc or fox news without seeing some anchor with like pets behind them or their kids or you know like sure there's just a point where life just kind of intrudes on work and you have to as as audiences as people as co-workers colleagues supervisors we have to adapt to that we have to accept that our lives and the intertwining of life and career are are that that convergence isn't going away. It's not going away, and and I think I think people are becoming more and more aware of actually working from home. It looks like there's been a, like a whole new can of worms open, and it's like, well, we were we were nine to five, and now it's like we've got the internet, and now we've got the virus, and now we're we're all at home working, and companies are saying don't come into work because. It's kind of like a systematic shift. What do you think, Idris? Yeah, I do. I think, I think it's, we can't overstate what kind of impact this is going to have. We can't overstate the, uh, the risks that it brings to us as workers, but we also can't underestimate the advantage that it provides owners and employers, right? Because right. this is a chance, this is, and I mean, I work for a lean company. This is a chance for them to really offset a lot of overhead in the midst of a place where they're losing cash flow up and down, right? So I- The like, business I'm, is open, right? To keep, to keep the lights on, right? To keep the electricity on. Well, and I, I'm in Alberta, Canada, and that is, you know, people know us globally as oil sands. We have a lot more here, but that is a big piece to what we do. Those companies that were on the edge, you know, they're, that edge is razor sharp now. Whatever cash right. flows they have, they have to preserve at absolute, absolute like you you can't lose it so right. the idea of lifting off that whatever overhead you can 
is going to be critical over the next quarter. So, you know, once, as people are, and in Alberta, they are kind of coming back and in all, all across Canada and in the U.S., they weren't even really, you know, locking people down necessarily depending on the state. So it was very different. Mexico was different. They had a different approach to it as well. Over in Europe, everyone had a different approach um, and it seemed to be very effective and for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, North America was kind of a little bit wobbly. We're doing, we're doing better than our neighbors, but um, it, that's not necessarily a great thing um, right. to be bragging about. Um, but the facts, are, the facts are that, you know, like whatever companies had cash in, in hand at mm -hmm. the time are the ones who are sitting prettier. The ones who were able to pivot and take advantage are sitting a lot prettier. So now the key is for those that are surviving, how do you lower your overhead? What is it going to take? Right. What, how do you keep your people? Because you because you need to keep business keep going. The lights on, right? But how? Yeah, and and if there are other people's lights, that's better, right? Right. What a what a great they can build the system. Yeah. yeah, they can build the system to 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 pay back that later, right? The thing is that system's already set up, so it's not as bad, right? And that's kind of what you know. Some of my clients, I've talked to them about a little bit. So, so we're talking about, to the audience, we're talking about, you know, the, this post-coronavirus, how the workforce is changing. And so people probably who are tuning into this is, how do we get people back into work rather than sort of like change the way people are stuck at home? Because, you know, we cannot always be like this, right? That's like my next question. How can we, you know, many are worried about it. You know, people are sitting at home, probably trending. How can we, you know, change that mentality? Because it's obviously physically affecting everyone how can we get people back into it sort of thing well it's it, re it requires a little bit of a concerted effort right so like as protocols allow for people to go back to work people need to kind of identify how they're able to do it and be patient with themselves on on that and right. and you know sort of watch for their own mental health i think employers need to engage more mental health services and to you know and put protections in for people to ensure that in fact that when they do come back that, because let me get this know, right I, the world's company is all about helping people right so you're kind of that's what this is what this interview is all about i just right it's about your concern with the people right it's like yeah. so yeah i think that's kind of important that 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 physical that ment mentality we need people to stand up like yourselves to say that would you agree sort of thing yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, employees together need to be communicating with each other about that, right? right. We need to kind of, like, the, the fact is everyone right now is having mental health crises. Correct. And that's okay, because we're in a pandemic and it sucks, right? Right. It sucks. Not... So what we need to do is we need to be communicating and knowing that each of us needs to be responsible listeners. And each of us needs to be responsible transmitters and build that strong community like you have. You have a strong community of people who are engaged with you. We need to be able to do that in our workplaces. We need to do that where, where we are, how we work with each other and talk about what is causing those, those pains, that disparity, that anguish, that anxiety, and, and, and know that we're gonna have the support system in the people that we work with. Because the fact is, if they're talking to each other about it and they're being honest with each other about it and that goes up the chain, then those serious concerns will get addressed. And if they don't, they stay under the surface and they don't get addressed. And those decisions get made, business decisions get made without the mental pieces uh, to the puzzle being added into it, right? And that's a real deep concern for me. Um, and uh, I, think that, that, that's, I think that's the most important thing we can do right now. And I think what you mentioned rightfully so about mental health, which is changing people's ways, um, do you think that's like a concern now? Like, do you think this post pandemic is going to increase mental health at the workplace or is it going to be like, are people, are companies helping those people to, to, to keep productive, to keep, you know, entertained, you know, not get bored, shall we say? I, you know, because I come from a bit of a technology side of things um, with, you know, content strategy, I'm really excited to see what comes up with the technological uh, solutions to right. that, ways in which people can, you know, appify and simplify how that communication stream needs to work. Um, so it, it, it can, we can ensure that there is a baseline of communication that's happening. 
Um, I know that there are a lot of people who are looking at that right now. There's a lot of talk about it. Um, I did some videos recently um, with uh, Dr. Easter Yaza, who is a, psycho a psychologist, a clinical psychologist in Southern Alberta. And she talked a lot about that, a lot about um, the associations and groups of people that are getting together now that are actually really tying in that, you know, workplace mental, uh, mental health and, uh, and what we can do as a society to ensure that we're, you know, doing the right things for our people. Um, it's a very interesting time. I, I it is, yeah. knowing, yeah, knowing, knowing now that we've gotten through the initial shock of pandemic and, you know, we're preparing for the next wave. This is where I think the rubber is going to really hit the road in terms of like, okay, now it's about cont continuity, right? This is a continuity play. Right. We are, it, September, October hits, we're going to see another wave or whatever. That's, but that's I think people will be used to that, right? They will be used but, to like, that. Well, they'll be, they'll be, they'll, they'll expect it, but they won't be used to it. Right? right. So, and that's, and that's the thing. I think, I think that's going to change how that's going to be the chance for people to strike in terms of like the mental health people, the, the, you know, the convergence of employers and mental health people to, to make that happen, to make that come together. So that's the timing um, in my view. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm no professional on that, on that front. I'm just a worker bee who listens. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and, and you kind of think that, you know, with this post pandemic, is that, is that doom and gloom? Like, I mean, I just want to like knuckle this down in more of a personal level. Where, where do you see those, like if a second wave does come, how do you see the shift changing from, you know, workers who have just gone back to work or just starting up, who are just opening their business to suddenly get another wave of this coming along and then being asked to work from home. How do you see that? Because there's, a, there's thousands of people that watch these, watch my video interviews and, you know, I've got, we're going to get a lot, a lot of comments. How can you explain that? It's a deep I'm, one. I know it's deep. Yeah, it's a, it, it's, a, it's a deep one. It's a heavy one. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a tragic optimist, man. I want to yeah. be, I want to be optimistic about all things, but I gotta, I gotta be straight. I think this, this is going to, this is going to be a darker period. This is going to, this is going to hit hard and it's going to hit. And when it does, we're going to have to really brace. Um, but at the same time in all crises are huge opportunities for us. But sure. now what we need to do is we need to be ready. We need to take the time now to prepare and, what that means is knowing those upper trends that have been accelerated, how are they going to affect you personally, right? If, if say, for example, for some reason, well, a lot of people apart. are probably scared of their jobs, right? That's the, and, whole, and, that's exactly. the whole point, and, right? And if, in, in, in another world, I might be as well, but I've prepared myself. I've prepared myself for that inevitability that there will be change and I may not force it. So I looked at it in terms of, okay, looking at myself entrepreneurially, looking at myself in terms of my own skills development, what are the things right now that I have that I can do that I know in leading, leading into pandemic changed how demand for me changed. So I look at it and I go, okay, my de demand, demands for me as a content strategist were very different before pandemic versus after pandemic. Right. Demands for me as a person that does sales for me, for me before pandemic is very different after pandemic. So looking at those sort of variables, knowing that we have a second wave coming and that the same sort of thing is going to probably play out. What are the skills that you have that are in demand now that are going to be changing as the accelerant, more accelerant is added to change these, these big shifting things that are shifting all the workforce and how is that affecting you? And what can you do to change that? Is there a skills development thing? I had a conversation actually just last week with a professional engineer, amazing stock man. Like this woman has done incredible work, incredible work. And she was like, I don't know where I'm gonna go. I have no idea. And so we unpacked it. We, we sat down and we talked through it. And it took about an hour and a half. We were like, okay, we got to we just got on the board and we went, you know, we went nuts. Yeah, yeah. And it was amazing. It was amazing because that was the exact process that I went through a little less than a year ago. And it was incredibly useful for me. In pandemic, that's the process I think everyone needs to do, including myself, because we don't know what's coming. 
I mean, well, technically, we do know it's coming, and we know it's we're for it, yeah, yeah. But you know, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. okay, how do we, how do, how do we sure upskill is... ourselves to be productive? Right, that's the whole thing. And that's... and and how do we and how do we tie that to who we are? Right? right, like don't don't lose your identity. Don't let go of your passions and things that have brought you to where you are. Think about the things that are going to come back that are going to enable you to do that. To enable you to kind of jump in from, let's say, if you you know do you do you know uh, accounting and you're about to be disrupted by a whole bunch of different things. Um, and, and and accounting people may not be here in the same numbers that they were in 18 months. There's very good signs of AI. Of that. And we're going to go into AI in a minute and, and, and stuff. So, so that's, that's, but, so, but that's see what I mean? To, yeah. yeah. And I, I think that, I think unpacking that as people is, is an important kind of thing. It's a difficult process and it's not one you should do alone, you know? So I think talking to your colleagues, your friends, you know, people who are in your network and, and walking through that path together is a very useful tool. I wanted to tell my followers, you're not, you're not alone. I think that's the whole point, right? You got to talk to people, right? Um, and you gotta, you gotta talk, you gotta be real, um, and, and don't, don't hide yourself during this, uh, during this pandemic e era. My next question, um, Idris, is now the workforce is changing in this fourth industrial revolution. I do you see people, you know, you know, from home now to work, what other, what other, what's gonna happen now? What, what, I mean, something kicked kick started this issue off, and, you know, people say now that, you know, opportunities are gonna arise. What does the fourth industrial revolution mean to you and to, and to the people out there sort of thing? Um, well, I, I think that what it, what it means to me is that if we don't prepare right. well, we are going to see levels of workplace precarity and anxiety unlike anything ever. And as opposed to pandemic, where it's temporary and it's changing, mm -hmm. it might become permanent. Wow. It might calcify. That's my concern. That's my biggest worry. Uh, so in, in terms of that, what we can do, I think we've talked a little bit about some of the things that we can do. There are some systemic things that have to happen. I think governments need to be serious about this, uh, looking at, um, and leaders of all sorts and all sorts of sectors, from community to religious, to corporate, to government, um, I think that this is a this is a concerted effort that needs to be brought together because when it changes, when I mean it's already changing now, but when it when it really hits, when that critical mass factor hits, that's it. All bets are off. You know, like um, I'm seeing a lot of trends in fintech, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, as a, as a buyer of fintech property, fintech pro uh, properties, I I see it on the I see it close up, um, and it's not good. It's not good. It's no um, good. No, it's not. So well, that's a topic. But that, the thing that, that's is, a but, topic that means something to you, right? That, that's it what does. It, yes. But it's not, I mean, it's, when I say it's not good, I don't mean it's all bad. I right. just mean that we have to put the tools in front of the right people to give them what they need to move forward, right? And right now we're not doing that in any kind of scale that we need to. So do you think people so, are lost? Do you think they need more help? I think people need more help. I think the... I don't have necessarily have solutions um, to the answers. The answers are very big and they're still changing questions, right? So the questions are broad and we don't necessarily have, you know, completely active solutions, but we have techniques that can help us through them, right? right. So we also don't know if there's going to be more of these pandemics to come, you know? So this is another, you know, uh, variable that it has only really kind of been talked about loosely, you know? and this is a reality for us as well. We're, we're coming into a level of precarity in, in work and life. At the same time, we have these global precarities and these trends. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's a soup and the mental health factor weighs in on that. And so, you know, it's, it's not going to be an easy walk. It's no. not. But we and have to, we, sorry. It's going to be hard as well. It's going to be hard for people. It's going to be hard for all of us. But the fact is, there are ways for us to get through it, but we have to be, we have to define those for ourselves and with each other. Right. That's fundamentally what has to happen. Um, so that communication piece is a huge piece to this, um, you know, leveraging the technologies that we have. Um, and, the, 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 you know, the fact that we have distribution and scale so accessible to us, 
affords us the room to when we have solutions to bring them forward. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not worried about us being able to do it. I'm more worried about how well we feel about it as we do. That's so true. And I think you kind of hit it on the nutshell that it's, I think it's all about people at the end of the day and people are, you know, they're questioning their minds, you know, what, what's going to happen. And we talked about, you know, the fourth industrial revolution. We talked about, you know, how people need help. What, where do you see COVID in all this? I mean, this is the grand question, you know, COVID is, 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 is the one that is going to, you know, affect employers. How do you see COVID affecting now moving forward with, with people at, at the workplace, but also with employees? We've talked about, you know, bits and pieces around that, but where do you see COVID now changing with all this? COVID is, I mean, in, in, terms, of, in terms of the global trend, I always say COVID is an accelerant as opposed to a, a situation. In terms of workplaces, in terms of protocols of, you know, safety, uh, inspections, um, you know, law, those, those factors, COVID is very different. COVID is, you know, a change it's a agent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a, as a change agent, you know, it, it, it's, it morphs, right? It, it's got, it's shapeless and formless and you don't right. really know the, inf the effects of it until it's already kind of ha happened, right? So my wife, for example- Do you see example, more redundancies she, like with COVID or do you see more like drive and growth? I mean, no, I see, I see a mixture. So I see, I see some forced, uh, forced protocols of separation and that's going to force business businesses to retool. So right. service-based businesses, um, are going to have to reorient there. There's not going to be a way around it. Like you look at, you know, say like retail or, um, food services, uh, quick serve may be able to, to scale and, and, and survive that, but independent quick, uh, independent restaurants, for example, they're going to have to retool. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be a way around it because you, the margins are so thin on their model that, you know, it's going, it's going to be very, very difficult to kind of play that out with half capacity in, in your menus. Um, you concerts, more... you know, arts and culture. Yeah. yeah they're going to be vastly affected by this and there's going to force uh, new models of, of how we do things. Um, I know that um, in Southern Alberta, for example, they're doing a lot of uh, uh, concerts on balconies and right. they're doing like these sort of outdoor, yeah, they're doing these outdoor um, pay what you can, um, you know, socially distant concerts. Uh, th this is something that is going to, you know, force a, a change. independently thinking change. Yeah, and, and it's, it, that, that part of it's kind of exciting um, and the speed at which that's going to have to happen is determined by the fact that, you know, a lot of us just don't have cash because the, whatever we had was being eroded over the last, you know, uh, seven to 12 weeks. And so that's a great way to think about it. I think, you know, people are thinking of new ways, even, even starting up an online business is, 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 a, is a drive for post pandemic, because it seems to me, I read an article the other day that more and more people are turning into remote working as a way to, to, to drive way due to the fact that companies cannot hold their, their overheads. They cannot hold their cash, cash flows. What do you think about that? Do you think that's a problem? Yeah, I do. Um, and I think that, uh, it, that, yeah, that's, that's an absolute reality. I have a friend and as a, a neighbor, in fact, who, uh, uh, is a senior level, uh, accounting, uh, bigwig in, uh, in a, in a company and he's doing analytics training because he said, you know, I, I have, I have this, but I have yeah, never really, I haven't really put it into any kind of framework or, 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 or pivot possibility. Uh, I need to have that because I don't know what's coming. Um, that there's still demand for me and there's still demand for people in my world. He's like, but I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the lines and, and, and I'm, 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 I need to be ready for the jump if I have to make it. So I All think right. that's, that's, that's the key is be ready for the jump. If you have to make it, look at what you need to, uh, and I'm doing the same thing, right? Like we don't, none of us know where this is going. No one. And yeah. Yeah, we, but we know what's influencing and we know we've already walked through one chapter of this, right? So we've gone through round one. We may have as many as three. Okay, knowing that, what do we got, right? So you can get the brass tax conversation and the brass tax, you know, with it's your like partner or your friends or, you know, your people and get clear on that, right? 
There you go, guys. What a great guy Idris is, you know, from the world's company, telling us all about, you know, the systematic shift uh, from people to the workplace to the fourth industrial revolution. My final, final question, and I think this is probably like going to hit the nail on the head a little bit, is what, what made you choose this topic? What, what do you want to share to a big audience like mine's, you know, that means something personally to you? And what can you tell the audience about what they want to, how do you feel them a little bit? I think there's a little bit more care that needs in it, we need in this world. And I think people are feeling a little bit isolated and they're probably watching this video and thinking, well, actually Idris and Naz, you know, they've done a great job like to tell us, but what can we do to help them? Well, so I, I want to take a little bit of a step back, right? Cause you know, I like, I'm, I'm a man in my forties. So I grew up, you know, a lot with, the Gen X thinking around work, right? So, you know, I was, I was there in 2000 building websites when, you know, it was the dot-com bubble. And I was there when the internet was a dream and when people were messaging each other all the time. On, they on work they thought that would never work. <laughs> and, and nobody thought it was gonna happen. And then it happened. And I also went through an entire life where I identified myself by what I did. And right. I, would change, I would change jobs, but I was still what my job was. I still identified myself by what I do. And we're now seeing in, I'm spending time with, you know, millennials, uh, my, my wife's a millennial, and uh, my, you know, I've, I've got friends that are very young and they're, they're, they're great kids and they, don't want to be defined like that. They want something different. And so I see the differences in the generations and I see what is in, in store for us, you know, like, right. because people like, people like me, I identify myself by what I do and, and that's okay. But that's why this is so important to me because I spend eight to 12 hours a day working on this. And so for me, being able to kind of relay that message, to talk to people about this, to, to, to line up opportunities for them is so critical. It's so critical to me because it, that's, that's who I am, right? But at the same time, other people live that as well in all generations. And they identify yeah. themselves by what they do because they spend eight to 10 hours a day doing that thing, I even if I'm they have their own families, yeah. right? I'm one of them, and, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, and we, I mean, that's the thing. We're not, we're not, we're not small. We're not. This is not a yeah, small number. We don't of folks. stop. We don't stop because we, of a virus. You know. That's right. That's right. The virus doesn't change us. No the virus may affect. Uh, may infect us, but it doesn't right. change. Us, it doesn't change. Right. Us. Unless it kills us. If it kills us, it doesn't change us. Different but story. It, that's different. But it, you know, it it doesn't it doesn't necessarily change who we are. So right. you know, knowing that and and you know, that's the the purpose connection to purpose, right? And work is purpose for so many of us. So many. So if we change, if, we, if we're forced to change work, what does that do to purpose? And I mean, we haven't even talked the economics. We haven't talked UBI or any of those kinds of solutions. We're just talking the basic, basic premise. Maybe we can talk about of, in the next of, one. Who knows? Of us. Yeah, yes. man, I'm down for that. But I mean, you know, and I think that that's why it's so, it's so relevant to me. And it's so relevant to a lot of people and it's resonating with a lot of people, you know? So I think that that's why, you know, I spend a lot of my time c connecting creative people to this world and people who have creative attributes that may not even be connected to this world and bring them in and, and help them. Um, in my actual job, I connect senior people to those opportunities as well. So right. it's a continuum and I try to play in part of that in that narrative. And so you just don't stop. That's the point of telling the audience. Don't just carry on doing it, right? Don't let it burn. That's right. There you go. Wow, what a jam-packed interview this was. You know, we, we covered so many topics and, you know, for, for, for a change, it's good to actually hear and listen to what some of these great guys like Idris is doing at the World's Company. And I think, you know... It, it, it comes across passionate and I'm sure we can talk about that in the next interview, you know, what the economic, you know, the changes and the disruption is to, to, to that. I think that would be a very big audience grabber. Um, and for all the people that are tuning in, I, I think Idris's message is just hang tight, right? Just hang in there. Would you say that? 
I would say that. I think it's a good idea. I think, but keeping an eye to what's possible, right? And, and acknowledging that everyone is feeling what you're feeling. There you go, guys. What a great way to end the interview. So, Idris, it's a privilege to, to have you on board to, to get your perspectives. I've learned quite a lot from this. And I think a lot of people are probably going to rewind and try and check what bits people need to hear. And people need to be cared for as well, I think, during this pandemic. I think that's, a, that's, a, that's the whole pie of, of what, who we are, is that people need that, that, that support and that help. So it's great to have you. Where, where can we find you, Idris? Where, tell us where, where to find you and, and so forth. Yeah, the best place to find me is on LinkedIn. That's, that's where I spend most of my time. Uh, I, uh, I love that channel. I, I, I love the Join professionalism. The I love right. the people. <laughs> you know but it's 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 a great place to it have is. conversations of that are meaningful that are professional uh that are that are real and personal you know so it i don't i don't, it's it's not the same like i'm on twitter and i'm on a lot of other channels but I, that's I, a bit I don't too play. much noise right it's too noisy now and right. there's there's a lot of opinion and there's a lot of false opinions more importantly sure. um i don't have problems having difficulties or dif disagreements with folks i have problems when they're not real folks Right, 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 and we got so, a lot of so that. So, LinkedIn is my spot. Um, so, so look, look, for, look me up, uh, Idris Fashion. I'm happy to have conversations with just about anybody because I don't stop talking. <laughs> there you go, guys. What a privilege to interview Idris, and uh, do check out the, the the full interview. Don't just check out bits. Do check him out. Do go to his LinkedIn channel. You know, he's he's a great guy, a community builder. Hopefully, we can do another one of these, and I think. Yeah, let's just get it out there and tell as many people. So it's good to have you. For, for, and one thing, I, 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 just, I just want to just, you know, tip sure. my hat to you and the work that you're doing. I, I love what you're doing. I love how you are, are really just bringing people together. And I think it's an important function, especially now. This is such a critical time for us to be doing that, to be talking and having real, sincere conversations about where people are and what they need. So thank you. There you go, guys. It's, it's a great to, to do this. And uh, what, a, what an interview it was. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. So, Idris, it's good to have you. Thanks very much. Peace. Thanks for having me. Talk All soon. All right. Take it easy.